Hello, my name is Chris Gay. I'm a paramedic with Gilpin Ambulance Authority. I've been a paramedic for about five years, and today we're going to go what a normal day is as a paramedic at Gilpin. Uh, we work a 48-hour shift, and then we get four days off. During that 48-hour shift, we've got quite a few tasks that we want to accomplish. We start our shift off by going through a rig check to ensure all equipment's present and everything's in operational order. After we complete our rig check, we make sure that all our station chores are done, whether it be cleaning, maintenance, anything like that. We're very crew based and have a family atmosphere going, so we always eat dinner together. We take turns who's going to be responsible for bringing the food and cooking, but we all pitch in together to do the dishes. We run the 48 hour shift nonstop, so calls can drop at any point in time. We are always prepared, no matter what time of day it is, which can be a little bit hectic when you're trying to accomplish things like showering, report writing, QA, and continuing education. We carry our airway stuff for managing patients because this is generally where we'll sit to manage someone's airway. So it has things like the oxygen masks that you always see people wearing. We also have ones that go in the nose, which you may have seen as well. Just two little prongs in the nose. And then we have some nebulizers. These are called BBMs. These are those bags that you see people squeeze on TV and stuff to uh, get air into people's lungs. Um, we have something called CPAP, which is like the oxygen masks, just it's pressurized air to help keep the lungs open. And then we have some other airway kits for doing more advanced airway procedures like intubation, which is just sticking a tube directly down into the airway to keep an open and clear airway that nothing will get into. And then over here, this is just cleaning supplies. Um, we have just various controls for the lights and air. Uh, we have oxygen here and we have some other ports around uh, that we can hook oxygen up to. Up here, we have our IV bags. We keep them on our IV warmer because that helps it so the patient doesn't get so cold because even room temperature water can make someone pretty cold. So we keep them just slightly warm and then different devices for delivering fluids or for the hospital to combine it with blood products. Um, this is our cardiac monitor. So it is a defibrillator. It also can check blood pressure. Um, oxygen levels in someone's blood and uh, it can do EKGs so we have that here and we'll bring that with us into calls usually um, then up here this is our trauma supplies so it's uh, we have some neck braces um, different types of bandages for all types of injuries like slings um, we have some splinting stuff and bleeding control stuff so like tourniquets and things like that um, we keep all that up here and then right here that's just blankets um, and sheets for this or for patients to help keep them warm um, we've got some emesis bags and all that stuff over there sharps containers and that's pretty much what we have over here um, this is a portable suction so it's kind of like at the dentist when they suction out uh, saliva or whatever it might be um, we have a house one here, so that's just the version we can take in with us. And then we just keep our kits and those cabinets over there. County Ambulance North, need to respond 2960 Dory Hill Road, Gilpin County Jail, map page David 19 for a 55-year-old female, conscious breathing, inactive seizure. Respond on Gilfire 800, Gilpin Clear 1137. Gilpin Ambulance, please respond to the Lodge Casino, 240 Main Street, for a female party, conscious and breathing, experiencing dizziness, cannot stand out without support. Move all traffic off stage, this is clear.
So here at Gilpin, we use a Type 3 ambulance using a Ford F450 cab along with a mod mount. Each compartment on the exterior has a specially designed purpose. This one right here carries all our junk bags. And what I mean by junk bags, these are things that we take out of the vehicle with us to go on a call, such as the ventilator, pediatric meds, BP cuffs, suction, other medications. We also store a couple other personal protective items down here, as well as a fire extinguisher. This next compartment over here is our trauma compartment. Here we've got a couple scoops, long boards, makeshift stabilizing for limb injuries, and then also my personal favorite, the Mega Mover. The Mega Mover is a great tool for moving people when you're in a confined space, but you have plenty of hands available to help lift. All these items in this compartment are used during trauma calls to help stabilize the patient and move them safely. As you work our way around to the other side of the ambulance, we come across this cabinet. Now this cabinet carries a lot of rescue equipment as well as a stair chair and some blankets, towels, and sheets. The stair chair is a specifically designed device allowing us to move somebody down steps without actually physically lifting them using the ergonomics and the physics involved of gravity while safely moving them. In here we also have some rescue stuff. We've got a rope rescue bag that we can use to rappel down to get to a person. And then we also have multiple different sizes of harnesses so that we can safely get to the person and ascend. All this stuff is used regularly and trained on so we're proficient in its use and we're ready to use it whatever time we need. This next cabinet carries our ballistic vest and our tactical helmets in case we have to respond to a shooting incident, such as a mass casualty incident, whether it be at a school, casino, public building, courthouse. We also carry some rehab items, because honestly one of the biggest things that you can need as a responder is water. You can never have enough water. Here we've got a rescue helmet, capable with lighting, because we do a lot of nighttime rescues. Also in here we keep a triage kit for our MCIs. The last compartment carries Personal protective equipment for the driver, as well as two large cylinders of oxygen that feed directly into the patient compartment for respiratory issues. Once inside the cab, we've got quite a few different buttons to work with. First of all, this ambulance is equipped with two different types of radio system, 800 megahertz and a very high frequency. On top of that, we've got an air ride control system that allows us to move the back mod system up and down as needed to get over terrain issues. We have several cameras throughout this ambulance that are displayed on this monitor so the driver can see what's going on in the patient compartment as well as the rear view camera and some ambulances even have side view cameras for lane changes. This panel right here controls all the emergency features. 
for master lights for emergency vehicles, we simply hit that switch and it turns on all the lights throughout the vehicle. This box right here controls the siren. Since we're recording, I'm not gonna activate because it'd be too loud for you guys to hear, but all we have to do is turn that to the side or hit the manual switch button back here to switch back and forth between different sirens like well, yell, things like that. This also has an air horn. In case somebody's not hearing the sirens, we can tap the air horn to make sure they're aware of our presence. When it comes to driving, we have to exercise due caution, which means we're asking for the right of way when we approach intersections, but we need to make sure that they're completely clear before we proceed through. That puts a lot of responsibility on the driver while I'm in back taking care of the patient. is conscious and breathing at the Horseshoe Casino, sweating, vomiting. Please respond to the valet. Security will meet and take up. Move all traffic to OPSE. Dispatch clear, 16. Rescue 41, Gilpin Ambulance requested to respond to Horseshoe Casino on a mail party in his mid-20s with a bloody nose that will not stop. A possible low blood pressure. Smoothable traffic to update is much clearer. Clear. needed to respond at Famous Bonanza Casino, 109 Main Street, for a 55-year-old female, conscious and greedy. Gilpin Ambulance, please respond to the Monarch Casino, 488 Main Street, 447 year old male, conscious and breathing. Complaining of chest pain, please move all traffic to Op Bay, Black Hawk Clear, 029.
Yes, the ambulance doors, Timberline, Station 2, requested to respond in the 3100 block, Cold Creek Canyon Drive, per Boulder for a crash detection on an iPhone. No further information. Move all radio traffic to Gill Fire, dispatch clear, 1725. <laughs> hours we feel the need to eat and we like to eat well when we're on shift so oftentimes we eat as a crew tonight we're going to be having barbecue chicken and steaks done on the grill and we'll be feeding five members of our crew hopefully no tones dropping this time so we can all enjoy our meal but if that happens the other members will go ahead and put their food away for them and save it for them until they get back because it's a one team one fight mentality Ambulance South requested to respond to the Sentry Casino for unknown age male, conscious and breathing, complaining of chest pain. We've already had traffic to Gill Fire. Dispatch clear. 19. Please respond to the Lodge Casino, 240 Main Street, for a 32 year old male, conscious and breathing, experiencing nausea and extreme dizziness. Please move all traffic to Opsay. Blackhawk clear at 1953. 